and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, as we prepare today to enter into our worship, let us begin as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave us yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. <laughs> Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Feed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew you with the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all who look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord leads us. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord leads us. He answers all our A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, 
nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. tie together the law and the prophets 
But then through that, he sets Jesus up and reminds the people of how Jesus has instituted the church and the apostle and their successors to continue the work. So when we look at today's reading in the context of the Liturgy of the Word, or tonight's Gospel, I should say, our first reading reminds us how there is that beautiful image of how God will provide for his people, how he will feed them and give them something to drink. And of course, the prophets always would show how God provides for the spiritual as well as the physical sustenance of the people. And we see that often, as you know, uh, even in the Exodus event. And of course, as we know, um, in tonight's gospel, we see how Jesus prefigures and indeed reflects some of those great people in the Jewish tradition. First of all, as Jesus goes out after the death of St. John the Baptist, he goes out as a shepherd, gathering all of the people. He himself is in a period of mourning, and he himself has lost not only his cousin, but the primary prophet who is making straight his way. And so as Jesus himself is mourning and taking time in prayer to really deeply uh, reflect upon his mission, he does not center his mission on himself, but shows us that even in his own moment of trial and even of sorrow, he attends to the people. And there is this beautiful image like King David that he is the great shepherd king. And so what does Jesus do? The people have all gathered and have come out to hear him because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And of course the apostles say, well, send them out into the villages. It's time to eat. You know, this is, what's this look like? A diner? This look like eat and harp? And of course, what does Jesus say? No, give them something yourselves to eat. As that great shepherd king, just like David, he gathers the flock of Israel together. And Jesus shows that he is gathering all that are called into the kingdom of God. And then, very beautifully, we also see that Old Testament image of Elisha. And remember how Elisha was served with just that little bit of bread and that little fish. And so Jesus says to them, feed them. And this command is really we look at the prose and the language, especially of the Greek, it's not so much an imperative command as it is an invitation. And when we read it and hear them say, Jesus says to them, feed them, it's like, you know, do that. And your parents say, you know, put those toys away. Or, you know, go cut the grass or take out the garbage. Or why are those dishes still in the, in the sink that should be washed? And, but more so, what we're hearing here is Jesus is inviting the apostles to feed them. And the apostles are saying, well, all we have is, you know, a couple of loaves and a few fish here. And Jesus says, bring them to me. And what we see is that St. Matthew, if you listen carefully to what he says, he says, he takes the five loaves and he says to them, the five loaves and two fish are all we have, the apostles say, bring them to me. As they do, it says, Jesus takes the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. If you look at this language, this language in this gospel, Matthew parallels almost word for word in his Last Supper account in the Passion Narratives. And so Matthew takes the same language that's in the Last Supper account, and he has it here at the miracle of the loaves and fishes, which show us that Matthew is reminding us of the powerful dimension of the Eucharist. As a matter of fact, even in the Roman Missal, the formula for the consecration of the bread and the words of the priest are almost parallel to Matthew's formula. And I so often say whenever people say there's no scripture in the Mass, there's every word of the Mass, there's scripture everywhere. It's a powerful example. It's the Matthean text that's in the Roman Missal. And when we hear this and see this, we see that what Matthew is saying is he is showing the apostles as being the ones who are going to continue his mission of feeding. 
feeding the people. But it's not just giving them physical sustenance. He is going to give them the bread of eternal life, the Eucharist. And in doing that, he is showing that the apostles, which represent the church, will continue to gather, to bless, to distribute, and to sustain the people in the sacramental life of the church through the ages. And so, as Jesus gives them this food, he reminds them that it is the disciples who distribute. It's not because Jesus is tired and says, when you guys do this, that's your job. You're the apprentice. I'm the master craftsman. No, he is reminding them of what their task is, and also, more importantly, I would contend, reminding them what the role of the apostles are. And so beautiful, what are the number of the apostles? Twelve. And of course, it represents not only the twelve tribes of Judah, but it represents the twelve tribes of Israel, but it represents also, indeed, uh, the twelve apostles represent uh, the fullness of what Jesus is now giving to the people as the pillars of the church. And so that number shows them to be now the new tribe. The new tribe as not just the people of Israel, but the community of faith, the church itself. And then what's very interesting, I always think my favorite part of this that so often we, we forget, is he then tells them to go and pick up the fragments left over. The early church fathers always refer to this as even the directions and the purification of the sacred species at Mass, that the apostles don't let just out there what has been made holy. But there's a purification ritual. But of course, the point of it is what happens. More is left over than what one began with originally. And while we look at that certainly as miraculous, it reminds us that Jesus not only takes out of what is lacking or what is minimal and multiplies it, but he multiplies it beyond even our need in the moment. And I think about that when we think about when we call upon the Lord in very special ways and especially in times of need. You know, um, sometimes when we look at our own lives, we've all experienced it, we've all had people do it to us, maybe we've done it to others, you know, you give them just what they need, you know. I'll never forget, we used to have one neighbor, and if you ask for one egg, you got one egg. If you ask for, you know, <laughs> a spoon of sugar, you get to love a lot. You know, and then another neighbor can be five eggs, twelve. You know, Jesus gives us more than what we ask for and more than what we need because he gives us an abundance. And so finally, it reminds us also, in the best sense of stewardship, what we are called to do, give generously of ourselves as we understand this Eucharistic imagery of Jesus giving his entire being on the cross, and that Eucharist reminds us every time we celebrate the Mass that we are dying to ourselves and we are seeing and experiencing the dying of Christ in the sacramental mysteries of the Mass. God gives his all, and it reminds us as good stewards when we give our all, when we give not sparingly but generously, we all experience it. What happens? more comes back to us. We don't do it as a formula for getting more back. I always laugh. If we did that, we'd all be great investors. But we get it back, isn't it interesting, in different ways many times. Ways in which we could never imagine. The ways in which we could never fathom. And Jesus is reminding us today, too, that like the Eucharist, when we open ourselves up, when we give ourselves, when we sacrifice, what comes back is a hundredfold. More to be collected ever started. My dear friends, I think it's a wonderful reminder as we reflect on this gospel and also a wonderful thing to continue to pray for that we may open our hearts to God. You know that beautiful formula of life in the Eucharistic prayer, it says, Jesus looked to heaven. He said the blessing. And we were always taught in the liturgy of the old Trinity Mass, the priest looked up. We were always taught when you do that to look up. And the image is that everything, not because it comes from the sky, Everything comes from God. And even in the moment of the liturgy, the consecration is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit down upon the sacred elements, changing them into the body and blood of Christ. Everything comes from God, and everything returns back to God. That's the notion of the sacrifice, taking what comes from God,
and offering it back to him in that perfect fulfillment of the cycle of giving, receiving, and offering. So my dear friends, let us ask ourselves and ask the Lord to help us, especially as we reflect on this beautiful gospel, not only to be generous, not only to be good stewards, but also to remind ourselves that in our very giving, we are not only being charitable, but more importantly, in that charity, we are constantly, in many small ways, perpetually offering sacrifice to God. And the prefigurement and the perfect sacrifice is what we now celebrate tonight and every time we gather. God, if we think about it, takes this bread, this plain bread, this most simple element, through the consecration, gives us his very self, gives us more than we have started with. And indeed, in the end, as we go forth, filled with the grace of that sacrament, there is such an abundance of grace left over, more than we filled 12 of her baskets. With hopeful hearts, we bring our needs to God, whose love is stronger than death, and who nourishes us with the bread of life. For the church, may Christ continue to bless her with all she needs to bring his love to the world. Let us pray to you. Hear us, O oh Lord. For those in positions of authority, may God grant them compassion and wisdom in their decision making. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, O oh Lord. For those traveling the long road of grief, may they know Christ's presence and rest in the confidence that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, O Lord. Lord. For those gathered here, may we be given the wisdom to discern what God is asking us to do and the nourishment to answer that call with generosity. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, O Lord. For those facing addictions and for their families and friends, May Christ the physician bring them healing and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For the prayers of our parish family listed in our parish book of intentions, for these prayers and all the prayers we hold close to our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For those who have died, especially Dr. Lois Scaglione, who was buried today, and all the deceased members and benefactors of St. James Parish, along with the names of those inscribed on the crosses displayed on our wall of remembrance. May they rest in heaven for all eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, O Lord. Lord. God, our Father, we bring you our needs today, confident in the power of your love and abundance of your generosity. Hear them and answer them according to your will, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all of his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let, up the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the hosts of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. James, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be known.
us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are going to be having, coming up, a combined pastoral and finance council uh, conference call. Uh, we've been doing that in the time of the pandemic rather than gathering everyone together. So just to remind any members of our council, we do have all of the packets uh, in the back of the church on the uh, table where the hymnals are for pick up. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.